The vast amount of music that is available to the music fan is both enlightening and daunting at the same time. So how can the music fan get the most out of all this music? Please welcome on stage Paul Lemaire, Director of Developer Platform at Spotify, Echo Nest, for a talk entitled, I've got 30 million songs in my pocket, and now what? Hey, hey there, everybody. So I'm really excited to be here in Dublin um, uh, to talk about music and tech, my two favorite things. And so um, it's, there's been this incredible change in how people listen to music in the last hundred years since the dawn of recording music. Uh, now, today, if you're subscribed to a music service like RDO or Deezer or Spotify, you are literally walking around with 20 or 30 million songs in your pocket. And it's an incredible change for how we listen to music. Um, you know, being a couple taps away from being able to lis listen to just about any song in the world, as long as it's not Taylor Swift. So, um, <laughs> What, um, um, but I think along the way, we as listeners have uh, perhaps lost a few things. So let's rewind all the way back to uh, before the dawn of recorded music and recall how we used to listen to music back then. So back before recorded music, the artist and the listener always had to be in the same room at the same time. And so this means that there could be all sorts of interactions between the artist and the music. So this is sort of a typical music social gathering where, where people are interacting. The artists can see the listeners and the listeners can interact with the, the performers and people are singing and clapping along. And even sometimes the listeners will dive in and, and start playing the piano along with, uh, with the performer. Music was interactive. There was no escaping it. Now, let's fast forward to today. This is how we listen to music. You're the only way you really uh, listen, uh, interact with music for most of the time when you're listening to those 30 million songs in your pocket are through just a couple of buttons, the, the play and the pause button. So this is a thing I think we've lost, this ability for listeners to interact with the music. And it's very hard because the artist is uh, in a, a completely different part of the world recording their music at a completely different time. So how can we make uh, music listening today more interactive? So this is what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to be showing eight different experiments uh, on how we can make music interactive. So uh, experiments that m help a listener understand how the music's being created, to help a listener find the best parts in the song, uh, to help the listener uh, adapt the music more to the, the style that they like, and even to help the listener create new music. Um, and so how are we going to do this? So this is one of the fundamental technologies of the Echoness. We do um, what's called machine listening. So we'll take uh, an MP3 file, we'll uh, apply some digital signal processing algorithms to the MP3 to extract all sorts of interesting things like the, the tempo, the energy, the key, the timbre. Uh, we know where all the bars and the beats and the tatums are. We know exactly where the guitar solo starts in Led Zeppelin. So we can take all this uh, information that we've collected over 30 million songs and build interactive music ex experiences. Now keep in mind, these are experiments, nothing here is, is a product, uh, but let's take a look at what the future of music listening might be like. So first, the first one is represented by this metronome, and the idea here is to see if we can help listeners understand a bit more about how music is being made. Um, and so here's a plot, here's some data, here's a green line here. This is what I call a tempogram. And this is driven off of our, our machine listening data since we know exactly where every beat is in a song. We can, uh, we can get an idea of how the tempo varies during a song. So this is a song, So Lonely, by the police. And you can see over the course of the time, as the, the, the curve goes up, it speeds up, and as it drops down, it slows. So there's sort of this organic dynamic change in tempo over the course of the song. And some of you musicians out there realize, hey, there's these four peaks here. I bet those align with the chorus. And, and indeed, uh, the drummer, Stuart Copeland, uh, the band, they're speeding up as we get into the chorus. And you can hear what that sounds like. Here's a few beats before the chorus, and then we go into it. Slowly, slowly, slowly. 
So this tempo variation is not because Stuart is a bad drummer. He's an awesome drummer, right? Um, and he's using the, the tempo changes to give the, the band um, more energy. Um, and you can even see over the course of the song that the peaks are getting taller and taller. So when you get to that final chorus, it's sort of the, the most energetic part of the song. So using tempo um, and using the data to help the listener sort of understand how uh, the musicians are, are playing the music, even though you're, you're not able to see and interact with them. Now let's compare that to a different kind of music. Here's Britney Spears' tempogram for I Love Rock and Roll, right? <laughs> So clearly, no human was involved in setting the tempo for this song. We can take a listen. So, um, so the idea of, of this experiment is to say, hey, um, when you were in that room 100 years ago, you could see if the musician was using a metronome. You can't see that now. But maybe we can give uh, listeners some tools to help them understand their music. So that's the end of experiment one. Experiment two uh, is called Where's the Drama? So I love dramatic music, music that goes from 0 to 11 in about 30 seconds really gets me excited. But I have 30 million songs in my pocket. So what I want to do is, is build a tool that helps me find the most dramatic parts in the song so I don't have to listen to the whole song. So uh, what this does is it, it looks at all of the loudness data for any, any song, and then it uses a little algorithm to find the place where we get the most dynamic change in the music. So I asked a friend of mine what her favorite uh, uh, um, dramatic song is, and she said it was this Evanescence My Immortal song. And so here's the plot, and that a bright green spot is where we think is the most dramatic, and we can listen to this. You might want to take your cell phones out so you can sort of wave them. Um, so here we are, finding uh, Evanescence. There's the plot. We can listen to it. Oh, the, to crank up the volume a little bit on this one. So no need to listen to all the Evanescence collection. You just go right to this bit. Uh, so uh, another, another friend's a big fan of, of uh, dance music. She suggested that this Doomsday track was a pretty awesome build. And you can even just see uh, you know, there is a, a pretty awesome build here. So this Where's the Drama also turns into Where's the Drop for, uh, for your dance music. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I just love this. Uh, all right, so that, that's finding uh, the drama and music. Obviously, it's a little tongue-in-cheek. We actually do want you to listen to all the music, not just little 30-second snippets. But um, being able to search inside the music for dramatic parts in the song, I think, is going to be an important tool in the toolkit of the modern listener. All right, next experiment. What's that symbol? Well, that's John Bonham's symbol. For some of you 25-year-old CEOs out there, John Bonham is the drummer of the band that your dad listens to. <laughs> so um, since we know where all the beats are in a song, what we can do is, um, in this, this, this experiment works under the, um, the idea that any song could be approved if John Bonham were the drummer. And so it goes, we know where all the beats are, so we can lay down big, fat John Bonham beats uh, on the song. And, uh, but the, the, the hard part is making sure that John Bonham and the Hammer of the Gods are not playing all the time. Sometimes you, you, you have to uh, have no drum. So um, this is the Bonhamizer. So it's going to take a, a song like this. Some nights I stay up cashing in my bad luck. Some nights I call it a drum. That's pretty good, right? But here's it bonhamized. Some nights I stay up cashing in my bad luck. Some nights I call it a drop. Some nights I wish that my life could build a castle. Some nights I wish they just fall off. But I still wake up. I still see a ghost. Oh, Lord, I'm still not sure what I stand for. Oh, what do I stand for? Most nights I don't know 
good sound system. All right, so I'm really looking forward to the future music player that has the bonzo button on it to give me a little extra kick. All right, the next one is also uh, uh, about adapting music to a, a kind of style that I like, and it's called the swinger. So the, what the swinger does, it takes any song and makes a swing version of it. So swinging is, you know, you know um, only thing it does is it does a little time stretching on the first half of the beat and time shrinking of the second half of the beat. Um, and um, so if you're into like doing swing dancing and you need more swing music, maybe you can use this to, to give you more music. So here's, here's a song that's not swung. You're all familiar with that, so let's make it uh, swing. Maybe. So apparently there are dance groups in the United States who are using the swinger to uh, give them a little more extra music. All right, so that's swinger. Um, next up, this is more of a building block technology, and this is this is a, a, a technology we call remix. And so we've, what we've been doing so far is doing some a minor ad adaptation to music, but remix really lets uh, a programmer algorithmically. Uh, remix music. So I think this might be the first code to appear on the music stage. Uh, any programmers out here? Okay, so here's here for you. Six lines of Python code um, that creates new music. And so what this what this code does, it uses this remix technology to take a song, uh, it's Bad Romance by Lady Gaga, and it finds all of the beats in the song, and then finds the beats that are at the first beat of every bar, and uses them to render a new song. Um, so uh, visually, that looks like this, and audio you can hear. So it's amazingly musical, isn't it? <laughs> so I have a theory. You can put Lady Gaga in just about any order, and it sounds just as good. <laughs> and to prove that, here's three lines of code that's going to take the same song and put the beats in, in reverse order. So I call this the Memento Edition. <laughs> Enough of Lady Gaga. Uh, so um, the remix technology is going to be sort of the core of the next uh, three experiments. The first one is called uh, Infinite Jukebox. So you all have your favorite songs. Sometimes you might wish that your favorite song was longer. So that's what the Infinite Jukebox does. So it's for when your favorite song isn't long enough. The Infinite Jukebox will dynamically remix a song uh, to give you a never-ending but ever-changing version of the song. And it does this because we know what all the, the beats in the song sound like. It will go through and find all of the beats in the song that sound really similar. And so when we play back the song, instead of playing it sequentially, when we get to a place that has a very similar sounding part in a different part of the song, we can sometimes jump to that song. Do this a little intelligently and we get this never-ending, ever-changing ever version of the song. So those are the beats around the circumference. The connections are where the beats are similar. And you'll start to see us jumping around between the different parts. So we're in the first chorus now. So now we're in the second chorus. Back to the first chorus. So, uh, 
it will never end. So um, the, the Infinite Jukebox, it's been online for a little while, and I just checked in 750,000 hours of uh, Infinite Jukebox listening has happened. Uh, so it's not at Infinite yet, but a whole lot of people are, are using it to listen to infinite versions of their music. All right, what's up? We have a canon here. Um, so the idea of this next uh, experiment is to create new music by turning your favorite song into a canon. So you, uh, a canon is a song like Row, Row, Row Your Boat that you can play against uh, an offset time copy of itself. Um, and so what the, the uh, auto canonizer does is it'll take a song, it'll play it through, um, straight through, but it will find a, create a second voice for the song by finding uh, parts of the song that might uh, overlay in a, such a way to give you a, a musically pleasing sound. Um, and so in this example, I'm going to take a song by um, Is, I can't pronounce his last name, this Hawaiian uh, singer who sings this great version of Over the Rainbow, um, and, and to auto-canonize it. So if you're not familiar with the song, it's just a single uh, singer singing the song. So whenever you hear two voices going, the auto-canonizer is adding the second voice. So here's what that sound like. I like the dark in the thing to myself. What a wonderful world. world. The colors of the moon stars so pretty the up in the skies are far behind. So on the face of the passing by. So strange shaking and singing. So that's, that's the auto-canonizer. Um, so I, I uh, created this uh, a while ago, and um, it, it's really satisfying because I'm a frustrated musician. I could never create music uh, that people would want to listen to. I play trombone, so of course. Uh, but uh, um, being able to write code that generates music that at least I find pleasing and beautiful, it's really exciting. So, uh, And that brings us to this last hack. This is uh, it's called Girl Talk in the Box. And this is sort of the, the end of the road here. We're going to make your music totally interactive. Uh, you can, uh, instead of just playing your music, you get to play with your music. So the idea of Girl Talk in the Box is it um, turns a song into its own musical instrument. So since we know where all the beats are in the song, we can lay them out in this nice grid, and you can interact with it with your mouse or with your keys, uh, make the song go forward, backwards, skip around, and do all sorts of, of, of crazy stuff. So, um, so here's an example of me uh, doing a sort of a remix of Izzy's uh, Fancy. So this is a 55-year-old year guy um, pretending he's girl talk. First, I'm the realest, realest, realest. Drop this and let the whole world feel it. Let them feel it, let them feel it. And I'm still in the murder business. I can hold you down, hold you down, hold you down. Like I'm giving lessons in physics. Right, right. right. You should want a bad bitch like this. Huh? Drop it low and pick it up just like this. Yeah. Like, I'm so fancy.
so that's uh, my world premiere. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. So I've got 30 million songs in my pocket. Um, I want to get away from just playing play. I want to interact with the music. Um, so I'm excited uh, for the future uh, when we can take all this music data that we're generating along with our music and create really dynamic, interactive music listening experiences. I hope you are too. So thanks for listening.